And so what should the government have done at the beginning? Should have equipped Albertans with the best information they have and protect their inalienable rights to work, to worship, to be with family, to live. The risk of the virus falls to who? The individual. The individual gets to assume their level of risk with regard to the virus. Not the government. It's not their role. It's not their function. It's not why God put them there. You say, well, what if the healthcare system ended up actually being overwhelmed? Well, look, that's incredibly difficult. That, that is no doubt a crisis. That, that is something surely to, to look at soberly and consider soberly. But God is sovereign. And government needs to stay in its God-ordained lane. And they're not going to like this answer. But you trust the Lord and you do everything you possibly can to meet the need when it arises. You take other steps to, to account for that possibility while still protecting the, the, the God-given rights of mankind. And, and that might even require leaning on the general public to get involved in the healthcare system, to serve their neighbors in the event that, that things got stressed. Look, I'm willing to get in there. If our hospitals are going to go and burst the seams, I'll get involved. I'll serve our neighbors. I'll put myself in the, in the line of fire on that. Wouldn't you? That is a much more humane, honorable, glorious solution for mankind to really come together should we get to that point. Instead of this false sentimentality where we're all in this together now. Hey, Tim Frisch with a Frisch Perspective here. That was Pastor James Coates, a portion of his sermon from February 14th. The sermon title was Directing Government to Its Duty. And I believe it was actually later that week after he gave this sermon that Pastor Coates was put into a correctional facility. He was arrested because of his stand that he's taking with uh, the COVID situation his church is near Edmonton, Alberta, up in Canada, and they are supposed to limit their church attendance to 15% of the building's fire code capacity, but their church has been meeting over several months at full capacity, from what I understand. And in this sermon, he really gives uh, his theology of government. He's talking about Romans 13 here. Romans 13 is the passage that really gets debated a lot in the situation that we've been in with the pandemic and government lockdowns on churches, not allowing churches to meet to their full capacity. Uh, and a lot of people use Romans 13 to say that we should be doing what the government tells us to do. It says in Romans 13, let every person be subject to the governing authorities for there is no authority except from God and those that exist have been instituted by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authorities resists what God has appointed, and those who resist will incur judgment. So it's interesting that Pastor Coates is actually talking in this sermon about why uh, there is a place for civil disobedience with government, and he really gives his perspective on the role of government according to Scripture. So I encourage you to watch that sermon uh, in order to give you a perspective on how he looks at the government and why he's taking the stand that he's taking. I think it's really good, too, to step back and, and think about uh, what does the, the whole Bible have to say about government. It's a, it's a pretty complicated issue, actually. I, I think it can be uh, something that we have a lot of a different opinions on. And so I think it is really worth having the conversation I'd love to hear what you think in the comments below because I think this conversation is something we really have to think through. Again, a lot of people are saying Romans 13 means we have to obey the government when the government tells us we can't meet in our normal capacity. But Pastor Coates is really giving his theology of government that government 
uh, has its authority from God, and it, it's actually accountable to God. Government has a certain mandate given by God to protect people's rights, and those rights are given by God. So his sermon really goes into detail on all of that, but he also gets into some practical applications, uh, questions that get raised as we deal with issues like this. And that's what I was showing in that clip at the beginning of this video, just some of the practical answers that he gives. One question having to do with what the government up in Alberta should have done from the beginning of the whole situation. And I think he brings out a point that a lot of people would agree with that when it comes to something like a virus, the government is not really responsible. It's not culpable for people uh, getting a virus. And even if someone dies from the virus, it's not the government's fault. It's not really the government uh, that, that has the ability to control everything when it comes to diseases. So he says that the risk for uh, contracting a virus really is something that the individual has to assume. I know a lot of people who watch my channel would, would agree with that. I'm sure some people might have a different perspective on it, but um, I think there's a lot of wisdom in that, that when it comes to our health, we, we have to really think about our own health and take responsibility for that. And viruses aren't the only thing affecting our health and putting our lives at risk. Really, there's a lot of decisions that we make as individuals that impact our health. And uh, just completely giving over our, our health and our responsibility for our health over to the government is something I think you know we should be really examining and taking a look at. So I thought that was a good... Uh, interesting point that he was making there. But a, a very important issue that he does bring up there is, well, what if the healthcare system is overrun in a situation like this? And that, to me, is a really serious question that a lot of people are going to raise. He does answer it some there. He gives his perspective on it. He says that the government should be prepared for a situation like that. Hospitals should do their best to be prepared. And then even the public should be willing to step in and help out if the healthcare system becomes very burdened and stressed. So his perspective there is that there is a way to deal with the possibility of a healthcare system being overrun without the government taking all of the measures that it's taking. And his main concern is that government is actually infringing on God-given rights of people in this situation. So that's a crux of his argument. Now I will say in relationship to healthcare systems being overrun, it is a very serious issue. And I happened to hear last Sunday at my church about some missionaries we support down in Mexico and they were talking about the, the difficulties uh, that they're having with the, the coronavirus, the pandemic down there and how it's affecting uh, things in, in their area. And I'm sure their healthcare system probably is very stressed. And so I'm sure depending on where you live, you're going to look at this in different ways. And that's something I've been saying for quite a while, that if you're in some areas, uh, you're being really heavily affected uh, by the pandemic and in other areas, not as much. As a matter of fact, Pastor Coates says that there really isn't a pandemic. And that is certainly uh, some people's perspective. But like I said, missionaries like the ones that I was referring to, in Mexico, uh, they, they would definitely say there is a pandemic. So anyway, dealing with the reality that the healthcare systems can be uh, stressed and, and overburdened is something we really do have to keep in mind. I think that does happen at times. So I'm glad he's really trying to address those issues and, and I, I know that he has great conviction in what he's saying in regard to the church. And I think it's definitely worth listening to, to what he has to say. And he is willing to put his money where his mouth is. He, he is now in a correctional facility uh, because of the stand that he's taken. And so he would say that um, he is showing submissiveness to the, to the government because he's willing to accept whatever consequences are dealt toward him. But that submissiveness doesn't necessarily mean doing everything that the government tells you to do. There are times, he would say, where we have to actually say we have to obey God rather than man. And for him, from his perspective, meeting on Sundays as an entire church is an issue of obedience to Christ. 
So very interesting. It, it definitely gives you a lot of insight into how Pastor Coates looks at this situation. I think a lot of you know by now that my view on this is that each church and the leaders of a church and, and the church as a body locally have to determine uh, what is wisest for them, what they believe God wants them to do, how to best handle the situation. But I definitely sympathize with what he's saying in regard to um, the, the government and it overstepping its boundaries. I think that's something that, you know, as churches, we do have religious freedom and it can so easily be infringed upon when there are justifications given for it in a situation like this. And I think he's pushing back against that. So religious freedom is something that's very uh, important and something we need to continue to look at as we deal with everything that's going on uh, with the coronavirus and the health crisis. So those are some of my thoughts. I'd love to hear what you think in the comments below. I know with a situation like this, it can be hard to keep the conversation civil, but please try to keep your conversation edifying and helpful to others. But thank you so much for listening to some of my thoughts brought to you from a fresh perspective.